Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today, we'll be extending our inventory system from the last video to allow for saving and loading. Now, since our inventory is a scriptable object, and our items are also scriptable objects, we can't simply convert our inventory scriptable object to a JSON and save it. We're actually going to have to create a database to hold our items so that we can serialize the scriptable object of our item back into our inventory when it goes to repopulate the scriptable object. Now, that sounds pretty complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. And sure, it would be nice to not have to do this if Unity just auto-populated the scriptable object back into another scriptable object, but the instance ID of your scriptable object that's saved inside of another scriptable object changes. So when it goes to load in the value that is saved for that slot in your inventory, it's unable to find the object that's saved there. So that's why we'll be creating the database. So let's go into our item scripts folder and we'll create another script inside of here and call it item database object. Once you create that object, go ahead and open it up in your IDE. Now the database that holds our items is also going to be a scriptable object. The reason we're using a scriptable object for this is so that we don't have to drag and drop an item database into every single scene that we want to have our game in. Instead, we can just reference the database that lives within our project. So the first thing we'll want to do is get rid of where it says mono behavior and replace it with scriptable object. Now we can get rid of the start and update functions and inside of here we'll say public item object, make it an array and call it items. This will be an array of all the items that exist within our game. Now let's also make a dictionary so that we can import an item and easily return the ID of that item. So we'll say public dictionary. The dictionary is going to use an item object as the key and the value will be an INT. This way we can put in an item object into our dictionary and it will return the ID that that item is supposed to be. We'll call it get ID. And now, since Unity doesn't serialize dictionaries, we're going to use a little callback function to create the dictionary. So after your scriptable object, put a comma, and then we'll type I serialization callback receiver. And then we're going to hover over it and click show potential fixes, implement interfaces, get rid of these throw new systems not implemented exceptions. And what this is, is that these are functions that you can put code in to fire before and after Unity serializes the object. So we're not going to be using on before serialize for this. We'll just be using on after deserialize. And what we're going to do, we'll say get ID equals new dictionary. This clears our dictionary out to make sure that we're not duplicating anything. Now we're going to loop through all of our items. And we'll say get ID dot add items I and the ID for that item will be I. Excellent. Now every time Unity serializes this scriptable object, it'll automatically populate the dictionary with reference values based off the items array that we created in the editor. Now that we have our item database object created, we need a way to actually create it inside of the editor. So let's go above the public class and create a create asset menu and we'll say file name is equal to new item database then we'll say menu name is equal to inventory system slash items slash database excellent now let's go back into unity and we're going to create a new item database scriptable object inside of your items folder right click create inventory system items database and we'll just call it database now you can see we have our database which has a list of items on it. So let's go ahead and populate it with all of the items that we currently have in our game. The easiest way to do this is if you click on your database object and click this little lock button, it'll keep your inspector from changing. Then you can highlight all of your items, drag and drop it straight into the items array. Now you can unlock the window if you want to. Now that we have our database made and the items set up on it, let's go back into our IDE and let's go to the inventory object script. And now we need to make a variable for placing the database object. So we'll say public item database object database. 
And then one quick thing we're going to change is this bool has item and if has item. We can actually clean this up and make it a little easier. I noticed this from a comment that was left on my previous video. So we can get rid of where it says if has item. Get rid of the bool has item. Get rid of has item is equal to true and replace break with return. So what this is doing is it's saying we're going to loop through all of the items in our container. If the item is equal equal to the item, we increase the amount in return. Don't play any more code. But if we do not find an item that is currently inside of the inventory, we'll create a new item. That's just a simpler way of doing it compared to the extra variable that I had before. But moving on, now that we have our database added as a public variable, Let's do something with it. So on the container.add new inventory slot, we're going to push the ID of that item into the inventory. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the inventory slot class, and we're going to create a new variable here called public int ID. Now inside of our constructor, we're going to say int underscore ID, and then we're going to set the ID when it's created by saying ID is equal to underscore ID. Now right here we need to put the ID of the object and the easiest way to get the ID of the object is by saying database.getID and the item ID we want is underscore item. Excellent. Now when we add a new item to our inventory we'll use the databases get item to pull the item ID and populate it into our inventory slot. So how we're going to solve Unity not reserializing the scriptable object into our inventory scriptable object slot, which for reference is here. So if we go to our inventory and look at our inventory and create a new item, say we have an item ID of one, which I believe was monkfish, and we have five of them. If we serialize this out to a file and save it, it's going to put a ID equals one item equals it's not going to say monkfish scriptable object it's going to be a string of numbers that references the instance id of that scriptable object and the amount will say five then when we go to load that it's going to use the instant id of this scriptable object to try to find that object but it's not going to be able to so we're going to use this id in our item database to repopulate this and how we're going to repopulate it is if we go back into our IDE, we're going to make Unity automatically repopulate it based off our database after it serializes the object. So after scriptable object, put a comma and type I serialization callback receiver. Add in the two functions that it requires. Again, we will not be using on before. We'll only be using on after. And inside of here, let's do a for loop through all of the items inside of our container. And then we'll say container i dot item is equal to database dot. Now you'll see that we only have a get ID, which requires us to put the item in and retrieve an ID. But we need to put the ID in and retrieve an item to repopulate the missing field that was removed during serialization. So... Let's go back into our item database object and we could do a double for loop to search through the items inside of our database but when you have a few thousand objects that can be pretty performant heavy. So what we're going to do is use two dictionaries. Now what we're actually doing is making a trade-off between performance and memory. Since we're going to have two dictionaries our memory is technically going to be doubled. So it's your call on if you want the performance versus the memory. And it may be more the development of your game's call, more than your call. But for now, until we have an issue with how this is working, we're going to use a double dictionary. So just go ahead and copy your dictionary, and we're just going to replace item object and int to say int and item object. That way we can use the int as the key and return the item object as the value. And we're gonna rename this to say get item. Now we need to copy and paste this, say get item, and change this to say int item object. So we're creating a new get item dictionary to make sure we're not double populating anything. Then we need to add it to the dictionary. So we'll say get item dot add, and instead of items i i, we'll say i comma items i. 
Now we have both of our dictionaries set up. Let's go back into our inventory object and we'll say database.getItem and we'll pass in the ID, which is stored under containerI.id, which we populated when the item was added to the inventory. And since there's only one line in this for loop, we can actually get rid of these brackets. So how we have this coded is as soon as anything changes on our scriptable object that causes Unity to need to serialize that object, we're just going to go ahead and look through all of the items in our container and repopulate the item slot to make sure it's the same item that matches with the item's ID. So let's go back into Unity, and after it compiles, if we change our item ID, it should automatically change the item inside of the scriptable object item variable. So we'll change it to a 2, and we're getting an error. The reason we're getting an error is because we didn't set the database yet. After we set the database, you'll see it automatically change to a sword. We'll put it back to 1. It's a shield, so I guess 1 wasn't a monkfish, it was a shield. 2 is a sword. 3 is sword 1. Sword 2. Bones. Let's go look at our database and see what it is. Monkfish is 0, and then we work up from shield sword. So we can go back to our inventory and make sure that's correct. We'll put the item ID to 0, and you'll see it says monkfish 1 shield. And you'll see it's automatically populating all the way up to our, is it 6 items or 5 items? Go back to our database. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's 5 items. And the fifth one is bones. So we'll put it on 5, and it shows bones. 0, it shows monkfish. Excellent. Now that we have Unity auto-populating our item spot, we just need to save the ID and the amount to a file for saving and loading, and the code that we added will automatically repopulate the item slot after the scriptable object serializes. So now that we're done with all of that, we just need to make our saving and loading functions. So let's make a two functions inside of our inventory object called public save and public load. Now before we start writing our save function, let's create another variable to write the path that we want to save our file to. So we'll say public string, save path. The reason we're using it as a string is because we can have multiple inventories and save them to different locations. So going back to our save function, the way we're going to be saving it is we'll use a binary formatter in the JSON utility. First, we'll use the JSON utility to serialize our scriptable object out to a string. Then we'll use the binary formatter and the file stream to create a file and write that string into that file and save it to a given location. So the way we'll do that is by saying string save data is equal to json utility dot to json. We'll pass in this scriptable object and we'll put pretty print true. Now we'll say binary formatter, but to say binary formatter, we need to add the using, which is using system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary. Go back to save, we'll say binary formatter, we'll just call it bf for binary formatter, is equal to a new binary formatter. Then we'll say file stream, which also doesn't show up, so we need to add a using, which that using will be using system.io. We'll call the file stream file, and we'll say file.create string dot concact this is to combine multiple strings together into a single string if you don't use string dot concact and instead you just use a plus something like that you're actually using more memory and causing more garbage collection than is what is necessary so it's better to just go ahead and use string dot concact because it's just as easy to use and it's also more performant so string.concact will say application.persistentDatapath. This is a function that Unity provides to you to be able to save files out to a persistent path across multiple devices. So we'll say persistentDatapath, comma, save path. Now we're going to say bf.serialize, and we'll pass in the file, and we'll pass in the save data. Now we need to close the file out since we're done using it, so we'll say file.close. Excellent, now let's create our load function. It's pretty much the same thing, just a little bit different. We're gonna say if file.exist, checking to see if we do have a save file to load from. 
we'll say applications.persistentDatapath, and we can just copy and paste the path that we have here. And inside of our if statement, we'll say binary formatter bf equals new binary formatter. Then we'll say file stream file equals file.open. We can paste in the path that we're trying to open from. Then we'll say file mode.open. So now that we have our file opened, we need to convert that file back to our scriptable object. The way we're going to do that is by saying json utility dot from json overwrite bf dot deserialize, pass in the file dot to string, and then say this for the object that we want to paste it to, which is the scriptable object. Now after we do that, make sure to close out of the file so we don't have any memory leaks. Excellent, now let's create a way to actually save this. Let's go into the character file that we created in the last video, or I called it a player file, and inside of the player file, let's make an update for putting in some key downs. So private void update, and inside of the update we'll say if input dot get key down, key code dot space, then when we push the space button, we'll just say inventory dot save. Now let's also make another one for loading. So we can just copy and paste, change this to enter, and then instead of save, we'll do a load. Go back into Unity, let it compile, change your container size to zero. Let's create a save path. The first thing you always need in your save path for how we set it up is a backslash. And now create a name for your save path. I'll call mine inventory dot save so let's click play you can see we have nothing in our inventory click on your player pick up some items after we pick up all the items in the world let's click space and try to save so we hit space let's leave play mode click play mode again and if we hit enter you'll see that we get the items added to our inventory and the error that we loaded is just a unity error and has nothing to do with us Excellent. So let's try to pick up some more items. You'll see it's adding to the inventory correctly as we would expect it to be. And now it's 62222. Let's not save the inventory. Leave play mode. Click play again. Open. Reload our inventory. You'll see it's 31111. Let's only pick up a couple items. So it's 51211. We'll save this. Leave play mode. Go back into play mode. Click enter to load the inventory. You'll see it loaded it correctly. Excellent. You would think we're done now, but there's one small thing that we still actually need to do. So the way we set this up, when we load the file, we're actually going to be overriding our database location with a saved version of this database. Which, as I explained earlier, you can't save a scriptable object within a scriptable object without having some type of database workaround. But I'm not going to make a database to hold my database, that would be ridiculous, so we're just going to manually set this database variable through code and then deserialize the variable so that the JSON utility does not save it and override it when it goes to reload the game. And the way we're going to do that is by going back into our IDE, we're going to change where it says public item database object database, and we'll change that to private. So now when we do the JSON utility to JSON, it's going to completely ignore this variable and it won't serialize it, so we don't have to worry about it overlapping itself. But now what we do need to worry about is making sure that variable is actually set so the code doesn't break. And the way we'll do that is by making an onEnable function, and inside the onEnable function we'll say database is equal to make some parentheses and inside of there type item database object then we'll say asset database dot and you'll probably need to add in a using the using unity editor then we'll say dot load asset at path and then we'll put in the path which if we go back into our editor we can find where the path is it's inside our items folder called database so it's going to be assets scriptable objects items database assets scriptable objects items and then database dot asset then after that put a comma and we'll say type of item database object so every time the 
scriptable object runs the onEnable function, it'll automatically set the database to where the file is inside of the editor. We can make sure this is working by saving it and going back into Unity. Click play and then try to load an object and just make sure it works. It worked. But since we're doing it as a Unity editor specific way, we can't even build our game right now. We'll, let's try. We'll go to file, build and run. Let's make a file, a folder to put our build in. Select that folder and let's build. All right, we got an error. It says, well, that one's not important right now. It says the build completed with the result it failed. The reason it failed is because it's trying to use a Unity editor thing inside of the build. So we need to make a check right here to make sure that it's only running this code if we're in the Unity editor. The way we'll do that is by saying pound if Unity editor and then end if. Now we'll be able to build the game, but when we play the game outside of the editor, our database variable still is not going to be populated. So we're going to write one more line of code to populate it when the game is built, and not just when we're inside of the editor. So instead of having an end if right here, we're going to say pound else, and then we'll say database is equal to and we can just go ahead and line this else out for now so that this isn't grayed out and it's easier to code. So we'll say database is equal to resources dot load. And then the item we want to load is item database object. And the path we'll want to load it from is required to be inside of a resource folder. But you can see here it's not in a resource folder. So let's just move it to a resource folder. Go to your project. Clear out your errors if you want create a new folder inside of the root asset directory. You can put it anywhere, but this is where I'm going to put mine. Then let's move our database into the resources folder. Go back into here and let's change this to say assets resources. And then here we don't need to put assets slash resources. We can actually just type database because we only have one resource folder. So there's only one place for it to look up this item. Now we'll unline the else, save, go back into unity, play it to make sure it's going to load. Click enter. It loaded the items. Let's build our game. Whoa, you can see our inventory is a little messed up on the full screen version of it, but that's fine. That's just display stuff. That's not messing up our code. We can change that whenever. But now that the game's open, let's click enter and pray that it loads our inventory. You'll see it did. Excellent. We don't actually have a way to move our character around, but if we exit out of here, we can replay inside of the editor, collect more items and save. Let's load our inventory, pick up some more items. Then we'll save this. So it's 82322. Let's go to our build folder, rerun this, and let's click enter and see if it loads the new values that we just saved, which it did, 82322. Excellent. Everything seems to be working correctly. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. But until next time, have a wonderful day and stay coding.